Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. The same prophecy was given to prophet Micah, but I like Isaiah's rendition. And the word of the Lord, let me start from verse 1, came to Isaiah the son of Amoz, what he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. 2 says, And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and nations shall flow unto it. Verse 3 says, And many people, say many people, many people shall go and say come let us go up to the mountain of the lord to the house of the god of jacob and he will teach us of his ways and we will walk in his paths for out of zion shall go forth the law and the word of the lord from jerusalem hallelujah it is important for us as believers please you can drop your bible now and listen it is important as believers to understand that there is a territorial dimension to kingdom advance kingdom advance generally speaks of extending the influence the reign and the influence of the christ when prophet isaiah received the messianic prophecy that would talk about jesus it was said in that prophecy that of the increase of his government and his peace there will be no end that means of the continual advancement and expansion of christ his purposes and the peace that comes in that kingdom there will be no end so this is a kingdom that grows please understand this he says i will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail I know that looking at society right now it looks like the church is not growing it looks like the purposes of christ is not advancing but i want you to know that the church is growing and the purposes of christ is advancing the bible declares that it is god's desire that the lordship of christ be established first in the hearts of men please say the hearts of men one more time say the hearts of men and then number two across territories so kingdom advance is twofold the establishment of the lordship of christ first in the hearts of men the purposes of christ must be established in the hearts of men then number two it must be it must be frontiered across territories that means it is not enough that individuals be saved it is not enough that individuals come under the governing influence of the christ it is time to start taking cities cities the bible says these are they the book of acts that have turned the world upside down the story of revival as we read first from scripture and then through modern history talks about men and women according to hebrews 11 the bible says they subdued kingdoms everybody says subdued kingdoms i'm teaching us this dimension because i was so touched dealing with the teachings that i had 
with um, CGC and then it, I was reminded again that it is not enough for us to just win souls in terms of individuals it is time for us to obtain grace from God to start taking cities he says ask of me of the hidden I will give them to you for your inheritance hallelujah praise the Lord it is time for us to take systems structures nations and bring them under the lordship of the Christ this is one of the ways that the kingdom will advance now look up I gave an analogy in the morning while teaching during the church service uh, of CGC and I told them that you may not have seen the founders of Nokia or um, Blackberry or whatever it is your Apple products but they have so done something to the territory that if your phone gets missing lost or spoiled you remain restless until another one comes they have forced the necessity of that product in your life you no matter how conservative you are when you lose your phone you don't just keep quiet you will say glory be to god but you will do something about it they have they have they have indoctrinated a generation into believing that without a phone a gadget like this your life is incomplete now that's powerful because that's exactly how the kingdom was supposed to become institutional that a day must come in the life of a city when if there is no service in a day people will say what is wrong not just on sundays alone not just on mondays alone they gather daily in the early church that a day will come where it should not be that there is no christian within a territory it should not be that god is void of men and women who can advance his purposes within a territory kingdom advance is territorial that means that we are not entirely free until our territory is free i repeat we are not entirely free until our territory is free i can enjoy the freedom that comes with a new life as an individual but i am still in bondage because if the territory has not come under the lordship of the christ i can be affected listen to me i can be affected by the value system that is predominant within a territory even though i have been exempted by my new birth experience such is the case that we experience here in the north such is the case that we experience in africa i give you an instance i am not a corrupt person you are not a corrupt person but we are victims of the consequences of corruption for instance why because we are immersed in a territory that still holds corruption as a value system so we are not entirely free listen this message is aimed at correcting the mistake that esther was about to make hallelujah her man was conniving with the king and attempting to manipulate and influence him to bring the people of god under servitude and bondage to pass a law that will fight and annihilate the jews are we together esther is in the palace as the privileged wife of ahasuerus having the opportunity to influence the program of god she was comfortable i hope you know that as the first lady of a king who was lord over 127 provinces a province is what will be equivalent to a continent a province is not a local government a province is not it will be the equivalent of what we call a continent today and so literally he was like the lord of the then world 127 provinces and here's a woman with the power and the influence to see that the purposes of god are preserved but because of the beauty and the security that came with the palace she ignored mordecai and mordecai sent a warning and said do not think when they finish with us when they find out you are a jew in other words although you are free in the palace you are not free in the nation are we together now esther's advocacy the entire book of esther was not about esther trying to protect herself she was already free remember she was the king's wife the same way you are already free as the bride of christ 
but the territory is in trouble there is a Mordecai somewhere manipulating the government and the in the the positions of influence to antagonize the program of God and the Holy Spirit stands as our Mordecai and he's speaking to the Esther of the king and saying do not be comfortable just because you can buy a car just because you can eat just because you are happy just because things are well with you just because your church looks like it's doing well if the kingdom the program of God the territory is not captured to come under the influence of Christ it means one day what you call liberty will not be liberty indeed hallelujah praise the lord god is a god who is territorial in context he deals with people he deals with things territorially i have heard of stories where flourishing churches flourishing nations were locked down in a moment because another pharaoh arose who did not know joseph when i was studying preparing for this i studied and it surprised me to find out that north korea was once a center of revival on earth can you imagine that north korea that once upon a time there was an outpouring of the spirit china was once a place of massive revival the hand of god was strong upon that europe you study the story of people like john knox and the rest mighty men of and women of god john knox who took over scotland through the power of prayer and intercession and right now some of these places have become monuments to the palestine many of the apostolic activity of paul happened within rome palestine and all of those those nations and today you can hardly find anything that represents the purposes of god do you know why because the individuals were free but the territory was not free daniel was free as a person he had been exalted to be one of the king's inner circle but the program of god in babylon was still in bondage and all of a sudden Darius, I mean uh, Nebuchadnezzar, decides to build a 90 feet statue of gold and says, when you hear the trumpet, when you hear all of these things, bow down to it. Three Hebrew boys came out to stand and be different. They wanted to be different, but they had to pay the price for fighting the mindset of a territory. Listen, please hear me. You are not free when your territory does not call upon your God. The nation of Israel were in Egypt to receive succor because there was no bread, there was no wine, food had finished. But because Joseph was there in power and Pharaoh had committed the entire governance of Egypt unto him, the purposes of God could thrive. Listen carefully. The purposes of God could advance under the watch and under the leadership of Joseph. But Egypt did not yet belong to god in terms of territorial alliance so when the man who was the advocate of god's program died another pharaoh arose and when that pharaoh arose he changed his policy look how easy it is to bring the purposes of god to jeopardy one man can just arise who does not believe in your conviction and that's the end of it we are not free until our territory is free dominion must be territorial is god speaking to us commanding influence and dominion over a territory is a dimension of the gospel that has largely not been understood please look up let me have your attention we have done well in terms of evangelism please come one-on-one -on -one evangelism we have done well in terms of printing tracts excellent we have done well in terms of putting jesus film and going to you know community projects bible translation activities we have done exceptionally well that is commendable 
except for the fact that it seems as though our lopsided understanding of the gospel and kingdom advance if we do not correct and balance it there will be a serious problem do you know this is the problem today in the west an average elderly person in america is born again an average elderly person in america is born again calls upon the name of the lord jesus but an average young person in america is far he's not even close to the gate of the kingdom what happened once upon a time america did not just believe in jesus alone they dedicated their territory they said in god we trust as a as a territorial that means god anywhere you see within the circumference of america it is dedicated as the space for your influence god is a god of territory what did he give to abraham not just the blessing he gave him access to territory god is always territorial he wants territories to be captured for him and this is a dimension of kingdom advance that people have gotten wrong please look up when we talk about um there is a concept that is used especially in the pentecostal circle it's called take over and it's a concept that came from the revelation of scripture that a time will come the mountain of the lord's house that a time will come the world will bring influence and, and i believe that but there is a dimension of our takeover concept that is wrong For many of us, our concept of takeover means one day Nigeria will be like Dubai. One day, um, Haiti will be like Europe. Um, I don't think it's going to happen. Not at this side of God's program. So the idea of takeover is not just in terms of infrastructural development. No. Remember that territory is about people. People. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof the walls and they that dwell in them so uh, the idea is not an advocacy to make nigeria become like dubai one day it's a wonderful project if it ever happens are we together but the idea is to see that the ideology of a territory now this is where we're talking about so when we're talking about territorial dominion we are not looking at it from a carnal fleshly standpoint although there is a socio-economic implication but primarily we are talking of the church ascending to a point where the church is in charge of the mind control systems write it down the mind control systems across every territory this is how dominion happens when the mind control systems that means the instruments that are used to shape the paradigm the understanding and the perception of people within a territory comes under the influence of the church that is dominion everyone please say mind control systems one more time shout it say mind control systems So when we talk about territorial dominion the idea is not to drive muslims drive traditionalists from a territory in that the only people here are just christians that's not the idea because the same lord is rich unto all are we together now it was the mistake that alexander the way wanted to make because of his passion to see this territorial take over the idea was to drive every non-christian out of a region and he tried to do it and he came up with a city called zion city right it was a city that would become a prototype of his idea that means a city that was entirely built upon righteousness where there was nothing that represented darkness there and i understand that but this is not exactly the concept until jesus comes there will still be sinners on earth until jesus comes there will still be non-christians on earth the same lord sends rain upon the godly and the ungodly are we blessed very powerful concept 
your christianity in terms of kingdom advance will be very meaningless if you don't understand this this is the reason behind the frustration of many christians who are now born again now filled with the holy spirit and then they tend to ask what more because the advocacy the proposition that was given to them at their new birth experience was that they should prepare for heaven and that is wonderful and now this guy realizes that he has 90 more years to live how many years so let's assume that this guy is 35 90 plus 35 this is a long time to live not knowing what you are doing are we together yes so many people are frustrated because the ritual of going to church on sunday then midweek prayer on wednesday then maybe a prayer meeting on friday then another fellowship and then the ritual continues then once in a while a conference comes then once in a while a revival program comes then marriage is added to it then children added to it then old age is added to it it finally ends up in the grave it's not a wise way of living an intelligent god would not design that system of living there is enough to occupy you to make your life worthwhile that you check the time and say my god can you imagine 20 years is gone right now i must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day the bible says the harvest is wide but the laborers are few let me add not to add to scripture but i think the laborers are also foolish they are not just few there, there is need to trust god for an impartation he says wisdom is profitable to direct it's already an emergency that the laborers are few and then if the laborers that are there are not wise operating by the wisdom of heaven then we'll be in trouble if you do not love this message you are selfish because it means you are not thinking about your children may god forbid it that it will be in our lifetime pharaohs will arise from our territory that will hijack this place that our children will be sent to servitude do you know let me tell you god forbid but if a crisis breaks out in africa right or nigeria most of our parents who are already close to their grave it's just to push them and they're in they're already close there you you get what i'm saying Believers are very careless sets of people. We always think darkness is so far until our carelessness allows it to come near. To come near to a point that our children will no longer have the... Who would have believed that the Ten Commandments will be removed today in schools? Look up, please. Who will have believed? We are not talking of Saudi Arabia. We are not talking of North Korea. Are we together? We are not talking of the Gulf nations. We are talking of a nation that has stood to herald the gospel for decades. And right now, individuals within a parliament would sign and say, get this thing out. You discipline your child, you are going to court. That means you flog the child, behave well, be a good disciple of Jesus. Straight, someone is punishing you for violating the fundamental right of that child. Are we together i know a great man a very wealthy man whose son was in the u.s when he clocked 18 and he came back the mother shouted he told her stop that i am 18. the mother beat nonsense out of him <laughs> now it's not an advocacy for violence and child abuse please don't misunderstand me i'm speaking to nations there are people following us from around the world but the idea is that most people think your personal salvation means territorial salvation no there is personal salvation i am saved but there is territorial salvation i am safe Pray for the peace of Jerusalem, not the peace of the prayer warrior. The prayer warrior is already free, but Jerusalem is in trouble. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. He said, they shall prosper that love thee. Hallelujah. 
I thank God for the profound mentorship of Dr. Miles Monroe in and to my life. We continue to be the fruits of his apostleship, advocating a balanced understanding of kingdom advance. The evangelical has done well. We respect and we honor and we continue to bless them. I came out of the evangelical circles, but the imbalance of advocating personal salvation alone as the ultimate key to taking over territories is an error an individual salvation is important but we must understand the principles that bring christ to be enthroned territorially look at this i love the way the bible puts it as for me and my as for me and my why is it important for your house to serve the lord if they don't want to serve that's their cup of tea no as for me and my house one time when they were fighting jericho they were instructed to not take anything is that true that no substance should be taken specific instructions were given and one man decided to hide something for himself because of that an entire the a, a, a little city began to defeat them now imagine the innocent people that died because of one person's contribution her man single-handedly was going to destroy the entire nation of the jews we must command influence and dominion territorially to establish posterity our children are at the mercy of our spiritual understanding the continuity of god's program is at the mercy of our spiritual understanding do not say like esther i am happy i am comfortable i know that i'm going to heaven if you like kill me i'm going to heaven what of your children what of your grandchildren sometimes this selfish approach to martyrdom we think that just because you are ready to die for jesus i what of the rest are they ready if i'm ready to die for jesus and this guy is not ready the proof that i love jesus is that for his sake i should say lord give us time let this man be ready too most of us don't know that this our advocacy for martyrdom it looks spiritual is selfishness lord even if it's to kill let them kill i'm ready now no no we are not ready we are not ready there are souls that should be saved there are territories that must come under the influence of christ paul said for me to live is christ and even if i die is gain but they killed him and he came back correct they killed Paul when they left. He got up, shook himself, and said, "You are joking." There is still, there are still many other places. If I die today, it is gain for me, not for God's program. If I die today, it is gain for me as an individual. But God's program on earth will suffer a heavy blow. So what do I do as proof that I love him? Reject and cast the spirit of death. Anywhere I see it, not out of fear, but out of my desire to see that I'm alive and strong to continue advocating the frontiers of the kingdom. If you love God, don't die. Don't die soon. Live long. Remain alive. You think I'm just motivating you. Tonight's message, we're just warming up. I have some serious things to talk about here. Let me tell you this. Brothers and sisters, hear me. Africa is coming under siege. Nigeria is coming under siege. There are powers that have intelligently been coordinating a campaign to frustrate the purposes of the Christ. And because believers do not understand the territorial dimension of kingdom advance, we continue to flatter ourselves in the palace like Esther, whereas Haman is already plotting the defeat of God's people. But thank God for Esther's. Thank God for Esther's. Doesn't mean you're a lady. Esther is a prophetic office. Thank God for Esther's. The saviors that shall arise from Zion 
Are we together? There are principles I want to share with you now. The remnant that will preserve the purposes of the Christ and make that preservation transgenerational. Take note of the word transgenerational. By the grace of God, if Christ tarries, I want to be able to stand from the shores of heaven and see that God's program still continues because we supplied a template that could not be bent. We mentored believers in a way and manner that even though we have gone, they still continue to stand to see that the purposes of Christ is advanced. Let me tell you this. The Jews and those in Israel were very wise. Although many of them have not personally come into the knowledge of Christ, but they have used the principles of Judaism to understand that it is not enough to be connected to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Our territory must also come and so when the neighboring nations fight territory they say no believers have this foolish understanding that because the purposes of christ is only in our hearts what do you need land for what do you need this for are we together now yes there are cities that when you entered you can almost not find land for church do you know why because the territorial dimension of kingdom advance was not taught the leaders in those days when they were free lands to get they thought that evangelism is all about once jesus is in your heart no worry how how long do you have to live and the platforms right now believers are stranded to have a place of worship is a problem because it's a campaign that was taken with intelligence over decades and the leaders as well-meaning as they were they were not strategic enough in understanding the territorial dimension of kingdom advance but in the name of jesus under our watch and in our lifetime not only individuals will lift up the name of the lord we will compel territories we will hijack the mind control systems the strata that manipulates the understanding of men this is what we are living for and it will happen we are not noisemakers there is a power and a force that backs us we do not speak cunningly devised fables we have been given the blueprint of god's program and we are following accordingly usually we will look like talkatives until you see it come to pass and it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the lord's house you know every time i read that scripture i know that god was not talking to somebody and asking me to share that idea he was writing it and saying apostle joshua selman see it this is your mandate i've taught you here that you must find where it was written about you in scripture not prophetically directly not everything written in scripture was for the saints alive many of them were written waiting for the real owner of that prophecy i found things in this bible i believe they were written for me it's true hallelujah i would share with us four principles tonight if you love jesus christ and you desire to see a generation after a generation if you desire to see nigeria the north kaduna state africa and indeed the globe stand and honor the name of the lord then pay attention to the things i want to teach you number one the first principle allocated by god's wisdom for territorial takeover thank you is the warfare dimension of prayer and intercession the first principle given to the saints by which we compel territories to come under the influence of the Christ is the priestly ministry of prayer and intercession. Take it high from me, Mike. Listen, believers, please look at me. Prayer is not for prayer warriors. Prayer is for saviors. There is no such thing as i don't pray because i'm not a prayer warrior and when i talk of prayer remember that i've weaned us away from this baby channel uh, uh, canal milk like prayer of give me tea give me bread he said ask me for the nations we're talking of prayer john knox prayed a prayer and said lord give me scotland not give me an estate give me a territory or take my life 
that you can carry one city and cut a map and put it in your prayer altar and that becomes your prayer Lord to see your glory and engulf Zaria no way for darkness a new spirit is about to be introduced in a territory and angels clear them out of the way because the saints are alive the Bible says hell had enlarged itself there are spirits that have not yet come to Africa but will come I hope you know that all we see is not all there is there are inventions of mysterious sicknesses that the devil wants to send but there must be men and women who are true watchmen not just watchmen as talk I will stand upon my watch and I will set myself upon the tower men who can pray darkness away men who can pray light into being men who can pray until a savior arises Anna the prophetess there's no record of scripture that she was praying for a husband I hope you know she was a widow she had a legitimate ground to say oh Lord while I'm visiting you now sort my life she said leave the issue of my life now I continue to pray until my eyes see the consolation of Israel when Jesus was brought to the temple she said now my, my soul rest I, I'm ready to go I finally seen him Hi. may God raise those kinds of Christians in our days people who are concerned about the program of God more than the personal interest of tea and bread don't get me wrong these things are important but your heart when you study the world's revival Evan Roberts Evan Roberts was 26 years old when God used him to shut down the city of Wales 26 many of you here are older than him when this revival happened the young man began to pray and say lord i am tired of seeing this kind of christianity i see within my territory powerless christianity and he began to pray and for a period of six months he was going to heaven every day every day from between the hours of 12 and 4 he would have a divine visitation it was the product of that visitation they got a little school for him to just start a little program and that was where the fire started people will read about what happened in wales in the newspaper and right there that fire will engulf them smith wiggles would prophesy that it will happen again yes he told lester sumro that it will happen again he said before you die make sure you don't die with this anointing find young men transfer this mantle upon them so that we, listen this thing we are carrying did not just start with us it's a relay i don't know how old what is on me is all i know is that i received it it's like an olympic touch it's easy for us to sit down and criticize our fathers criticize the founders of different movement they brought error they brought this and run our mouths and talk nonsense and not know that now the stage is ours do you not see the eyes of eli becoming dim do you not see that the time is almost finished and god is calling on samuel samuel you are sleeping wake up eli is about to go it's a call for a generation i speak what i speak in parables but it is true the eyes of eli is closing and if Samuel does not wake up and become that prophet whose word does not fall to the ground. We raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We sing in honor of you. We will raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We sing in honor of you. Na doka kasu nanka ubangi jika isalabo. Na kima masu nanka ubangi jika. Ni na doka kasu nanka. 
An anthem for a generation. We raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We speak. We will raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. Sit down. There used to be a song that we sang in a seminary that our generation will call your name. This is not a sermon for tea and bread. This is not a sermon for give me this. God will do it. But we're talking of nations. The ministry of warfare and intercession that an anointing must come upon a generation to pray not for the purpose of showing who is more powerful there has to be a grace it's a corporate mantle it's not just prayer groups it's starting now as little prayer groups little a time will come there will be no leader it's a grace homes will become prayer altars schools will become prayer it does not matter who wants to say what it is an ordinance signed by god's integrity let me tell you this if we cannot pray as a generation we're in trouble darkness will stamp us and stamp our children oh her man do not rejoice esther is still in the palace esther is still in the palace and she still has access to hazaros that which has been signed can be changed. Listen to me. The days that are coming are days when we have to trust God to sort our personal needs fast so that it can give us room to focus. All this issue of coming to preach series just about tea and bread. We are talking of nations. Our children are in trouble. Skataba, Jada Sidas, Ebrez, Sigate, Lesia, Hasabandaka, Raparuto, Supra Catiana, Rata Cinemas, Kele Barutasia, men carrying things that belong to a generation, not a program, not a conference, carrying mantles that are generational. Hebrew, Shele Barutasia.
Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 10. Verse 10. See, I have this day set you over territories, nations, and over kingdoms to root out, to pull down, to destroy, to throw down, to build. God is giving nations like a man is about to die and he say you my estate in Kano is yours God is sharing nations and saying I, I allocate territories who can sing for me that song will bow down and say you are God you know the song sit down we have to make progress tonight hmm. listen to me there are spiritual forces and controlling powers in every allocated territory every territory that is allocated has spiritual powers listen to me this spirit influence culture this spirit creates negative patterns in the minds of people they are called familiar spirits there is a reason why they are called familiar spirits they are spirits that have dwelt with people they grew up with people i shared this morning during the church service that one time i remember i was in shiroro we were ministering in a crusade and i saw a group it was up to 15 or 16 people women it was a pattern i saw there the moment the women gave birth they became deaf and dumb immediately i said what is this it was no longer a sickness listen when you see a widespread of a pattern is a testimony that a controlling power is reigning within a territory every territory in nigeria has the signature of the controlling powers there are territories where no matter how great the men study is the women that feed the men territories there are territories that are associated with certain things anger rage there are territories that are associated with early death you go to the territories and the youngest person is 60 years old but there are no children the parents use the children to live long controlling powers there are territories where you must end like your past you don't end like your future you can go to the u.s and spend 10 years and return back to the village in one room it's not about habits there are spirits there are many of us who have uncles who will tell you this one was a ceo this one was a customs officer but right now if you give him ten thousand he will say thank you what happened these powers 
there are churches there are territories where a church cannot survive five years impossible something must happen the man will die a scandal will tear him down something must happen there are powers when daniel began to pray the prayer was affecting the spirit of the medis and the persians the spirits that controlled medo persia his prayer daniel was not saying lord sort me out uh -uh. he found out that the time of the captivity of israel in babylon had come to pass and he started praying i daniel understood by books i read and i saw that by this time in prophecy we should not be in captivity how shall we sing the lord's song in a strange land and he began to pray and when he began to pray heaven don't mind the people talking nonsense that they don't know this is not about new testament and old testament it's what happens in the realm of the spirit the moment they began to pray gabriel the angel that brings messages the angel of service that archangel left the third heavens and on his way coming to the earth he was hijacked from the second heavens by one who the bible calls the prince of Persia, not the demon of Persia. there is ranking in the spirit a prince not a traditional ruler a prince let me tell you this the foolishness of many believers alongside our pride is why satan will tear nations down all these childish teachings that continue to move around that negates the reality of the realm of the spirit and the fact that there needs to be the contention of the saints will destroy our generation some of those teachings are deceptions activities of lying spirits the Bible says the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith and they will give heed to seducing spirits and the doctrine of demons. We are watching darkness before us and we are pretending it is not there. We are watching a woman barren, her daughter barren, granddaughter barren. We say nothing is happening. How can you say nothing is happening? A grandmother raped by someone the mother raped by someone the granddaughter raped by someone you say nothing is happening find a way to believe it early in your life that there are controlling powers they don't attack you they are not interested in you they attack territories there are spirits that attack you there are spirits who don't even know who you are they were allocated to a territory when jesus was about to cast the spirit they begged him not to leave the territory we can leave the man but keep us in the territory <laughs> hallelujah please listen to what i teach you this is the redemption of our children is the preservation of God's program within our land. There is a spirit now that attacks age ranges from 10 to 18. Once you are more than 18, it does not disturb you. It's like Satan has plotted his graph and found out that the most useful age range now are our teenagers. He's not disturbing babies. He's not disturbing the young people. The old people already, they're already there. But those teenagers... I know this by the widespread pattern in our teenagers. Their resentment for God, their obsession for technology, their outspoken, that the vocal defiance that they have is the spirit of rebellion. And we are watching, saying nothing is happening. One day my child will grow and a child of 12 shouting at his mother and while he's doing it from every territory, they are doing it. There is a spirit making it happen. Do you believe what I'm sharing? There are some of us, we cannot talk to our younger brothers or sisters now. We are 10 years older than them, but you dare not open your mouth to talk to them. 
you just think they are being stubborn no it's a spirit the spirit of defiance the spirit of rebellion when those age ranges become our governors and our senators that's when you will see the full assault of darkness ah but not when we are alive mm -mm. Mm -mm. god has men elisha said tell no man to come and let him know there is a prophet in israel not there is a god in israel hallelujah you do a program now and you want to put it on mainstream tv if there is the name jesus there is the name holy spirit there is the name eternal life it falls under the same category as some of those words that we they don't allow to be pronounced including god jesus ah. you tell a preacher to preach and there's no name jesus there's no salvation there's no god there's no redemption what is he preaching The most destructive manifestation of demons is their ability to manipulate the thinking of men it's not their ability to inflict sickness no that's cheap it's not their ability to bring death that's cheap but to keep a man alive and to hijack them whom the god of this world who blinded their mind the god of this world there are gods that station within territories there are territories where you don't find old men the oldest man is 43 because anybody that crosses it dies i've seen territories like that there are territories where all their men are dead the territory is full of women because all the men die some of you know what i'm talking about it was only the male figures in your family the devil took their lives away and left the women was it not the firstborn male that was killed when Moses was born? Not women. Was it not the firstborn male, two years and above, that was killed when Jesus was born? Imagine all those women. It's a principle. So mothers are becoming both mothers and fathers because controlling powers are there. And while that is happening, we are laughing. You know, I've told you about a saying in my village that when you see your neighbor's beard, on fire get water and soak your own don't laugh the same fire is coming to you we must pray oh we must pray there are spirits we must pray when i came i was asking it me about the testimony of the dear lady one a precious lady that i came i met I saw you people so excited and I wanted to know what was going on. And when he told me the story, I said, you see it now? And someone would tell that lady that the only attack she has is the one in her mind. Are you joking? Are you joking? I've seen demons so. This is not something I'm just talking. I've seen them. The first time I saw a real physical demon, it was then in the campus. I was at going to the back of a generator there used to be a generator there and as soon as i turned i saw a real spirit and he said get back that's what he told me i'm not talking nonsense that was you read in a storybook they are not cunningly devised fables i've seen these spirits they are real i know what they do on earth i know what they do in families there are controlling powers that destroy marriages if you do not stand your ground i love you i love you is nonsense just keep going one day you will wake up and see the same woman you love that was there for you and this spirit will land on your head like a mantle and you see what happens to you what of men who kill their children have you not seen a trend recently now a trend of rape rape huh that all these guys just come and just rape ladies do you think those guys are just driven by desire are there no prostitutes no it's more than desire it's a spirit there is something it seeks to do 
sodomy is a spirit you know that right there is something it does and pleasure is not one of it spiritual intelligence we need to stay and ask god to teach us wisdom let us know his ways hallelujah i know territories where when you rise up if you dare open your mouth and say everybody come and celebrate with me see what the lord has done from that day you must go down joseph told his brothers i had a dream it's not my fault i went to bed and i had a dream the sun the moon 11 stars and the brother said that's all right they were the ones who were going to kill him listen we must learn to pray these spirits out of the way we must learn to pray these distractions you see the things that are happening in zaria now some of the developments the roads don't you think it's technology that is bringing it it's a signature of the prayer of the saints shut down the prayer of the saints in this city then you will know what satan has always wanted to do I believe in the ministry of prayer it is not the issue of being a pentecostal the days are coming when it will no longer be an issue of devotion in the morning or praying for a sermon you are praying to secure your children listen let me tell you this day and age listen do you know if your child leaves home to go to school you should pray what happens to that child from the door of your house to school that child is under the tutelage of someone you do not even know By evening, he will come back and ask you and ask you questions that you cannot sleep. Daddy, what is this? And you say, who taught you? Say, my teacher taught me. Your teacher? Yes, sir. Controlling powers. Koinonia is not thriving just because Satan does not know we are here. Is striving because of the invincibility of prayer fire. I said it in the morning that there are departments in this ministry I supervise by myself, and there is a reason why because of the strategic role that they play. Now, every department plays that strategic role, but because of the spiritual component, the prayer department, the worship team, you always see me on their case with the leaders. There is a reason why. Because let me tell you the truth when these instruments just become music we're in trouble when this singing just becomes entertainment we're in trouble when the prayer department just becomes a place of fellowship we're in trouble and the fire upon the altar that it shall burn day and night most churches have partners financial partners and that's all right most churches have protocol members that protect the man of god most churches have priority you know activities but the things that keep the fire are not there prayer zero worship zero let me tell you something brothers especially honestly if you are a man in this generation and this time and your priesthood ministry is not at work you are about to destroy your wife and children there is no such thing as pray for me again you pray your way and pray the climate open ah my wife and my child mother mary as you go to church pray for me that thing must end it is my prayer that the homes in koinonia don't become like shrines that they become real homes the proof of masculinity is not the huskiness of your voice is the is the dexterity of your priesthood i've advised us ladies watch out for these things in saying yes don't just say yes carelessly and say time is going the urgency on ground requires men and women who know how to burn the incense Please sit down. There are spiritual forces 
that shape the minds of people a lady sent me a text recently she just graduated as soon as she graduated she said she's been feeling like tearing her clothes and running on the street now do you think an intelligent person will behave like that it's a spirit how many graduates have you seen that the moment they finish on their way going home a little kekena pep just turn and left them there till a truck came and climbed them how many people have you seen final exam final paper they just find something on the ground and say that's it you are gone there is no such thing that is just is no coincidence is the manipulation of spirits you have an assignment to sanitize your atmosphere let them know you are alive start with your atmosphere sometimes i walk around my house in the night especially when i'm around i'm just walking around my house do you know not too far from my house there is a graveyard i've not seen one ghost one one ghost where will it enter and come to my house I'm dealing with matters of destiny not, not a ghost coming from somewhere what business has the dead the living to do with the dead i even wanted to buy the place they told me that there are, there are graves there ah, apostle don't buy why you are dead you are dead one time archbishop benson idahosa came and met that they killed a fowl i think it was an incantation and he saw it and he gave it that they should go and help him and cook it <laughs> they had already caught it say why waste why waste meat like this in the name of nonsense sacrifice god does not love wasted he said gather the crumbs that there be no wastage see let me tell you this if you do not know the power of prayer you will fear demons to death hallelujah we sit down and allow spirits to roam around our houses i know a man true story in just years ago he was slapped by i don't know if he's a ghost or a spirit he he works then in the teaching hospital and he said he used to hear that means the um what they call that place doctor where they keep mortuary in the night while doing his work true story you will hear like discussions you know like people have woken up and they are talking true story and one time he attempted he shouted according to him he said shut up and he i don't know whether he he wanted to open the door or something i stand before the god of heaven and i lie not and the 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 spirit slapped him until that man died he did not recover spirits are real don't wait till you see them they are real my mother once told me a story they went to bury someone this thing did not I'm, I'm not sure it's more than six seven years they went to bury someone and physically as they were dropping the coffin fire physically fire came out and killed some people not parables not vision fire came out and killed some people have you seen people that they buried and you found a man back in your house all these things will remain when there is no prayer just saying i am the righteousness of god in christ hallelujah that's not the way it works we are legislators we enforce things we don't just wish things this wishing mentality will cost the church a lot you no know, it's impossible who am i that the devil will not come jesus went to fast satan went to join him he was fasting satan was fasting too he was waiting there for 40 days for jesus who do you think you are that he will not come around your vicinity from whence comest thou jesus asked satan he said from voyaging to and fro there was not a place that he did not go to have you considered my servant job yes i came to his house it's only that he built a fortification and i could not access hallelujah right now people are afraid seven o'clock people have to lock up their, their shops in many areas 
they are losing in business why because some tout somewhere will come and waylay them and loot and steal money and the church is just quiet don't be like esther but be like esther you sense anything around your vicinity you don't wait to understand what it is tap your wife and say wake up when you do that twice three times one month the devil will know where to pass see let me tell you this whatever you allow to happen to your life don't blame god whatever you allow to happen to your family don't blame god i'm i'm waking us up that territorial dominion truly happens on the strength of priesthood not a need driven prayer hallelujah i heard of a man recently for one four years I, I'm, I'm i'm trying to be sure so that i don't exaggerate anything four years the wife refused to get pregnant the man was tired one day he came back from fellowship the wife was sleeping he came and knelt down and put his hand on top of her, her, her stomach and prayed that woman into pregnancy no i mean it if i'm joking i'll tell you i'm joking he was tired of this thing and said no he knelt down you just sleep you are my wife i'm the one who paid your dowry let me face this spirit of barrenness see there are times in your life you need to get agitated spiritually and stop allowing nonsense to just happen within your territory within your family hallelujah i was so encouraged when i heard it literally prayed not like impartation or yet no he sat down knelt down on top of his wife's stomach and prayed in tongues until that report changed you can pray some things out of your life and you can pray some things into your life there are times that you can put your job your 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 certificate on the ground and lock yourself from 12 to 6 you pray until where you did not apply called you. Our generation has not understood the power of prayer. Those who know how to pray are people who do not take no for an answer. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. They don't negotiate. They decide and agree. God, are you in this? If God says yes, declare anything that stands the way hallelujah praise the lord a prayerless christian is a powerless christian a prayerless territory is a powerless territory a prayerless couple is a powerless couple a prayerless business is a powerless business a prayerless ministry is a powerless ministry Please sit down. Boy, our time is gone. The first key to territorial dominion is priesthood. Koinonia, pray. Don't just pray on Tuesday. Pray. Pray. You go back this night, trust God for grace. Even if it's 15 minutes, walk around your room a little before you lie down. Apostle, you don't know how busy I am. That is the excuse that is the door that the devil will use to enter your life. If you search for excuses, you will always find one. Let me tell you this. I have taught you and I pray you will believe it. Master the power of night prayers. Master the power of night prayers. A generation that sleeps all through the night into the morning is a generation that will not be powerful. I'm telling you this. See, there is a time when you will enter your Sabbath in experience. A young man, personally, now it's not, I'm not saying this is the Bible, it's my personal understanding that a young man who actually goes to bed by nine to wake up by six 
and you don't have time for your destiny you are building rubbles the night is when men who are men pray the night is when men who are priests pray the night is when men who are watchmen pray the night is when gatekeepers of destiny pray let me tell you sincerely i have not slept in days like real sleep to take out time and sleep it's a sacrifice you are supposed to get a job that god will use to change your family and your territory and while you are sleeping they send a letter from a parastator we need these 41 names in the list and there are spirits waiting there to decide what name will be removed and every other person is in a herbal shrine forcing his name to remain there and you are snoring away your your sleep is the marker that will clean your name out of that list you can stay and insist i may not have access to the office but i can pray i can pray i've seen the ministry of angels in my life i know that angels are real i know that they are real when you pray there are times i've tried to look for things and i could not find them and i prayed and slept and in my dream i got up and went to where it was and i woke up and went there physically and carried it many of us do not understand the ministry of angels because we do not pray in the name of jesus every prayerlessness and spiritual laziness upon your life i curse it now this night in the name of jesus all the movies internet browsing that distract you i'm not saying they are wrong but if it can sit down and distract your prayer life i separate you from it now it was in the night that jacob wrestled with god and got power it was in the night that god came to solomon and he received something men receive things in the night don't waste your night charge your atmosphere sleep under a heavy atmosphere of worship while you are sleeping you are receiving you wake up in the middle of the night and you know an impartation is ongoing see let me tell you these are not things we are these are things we have practiced for years strong worship in that atmosphere while you sleep and you will keep having all kinds of dreams sometimes the dreams will show you the root cause of things sometimes you are hearing a message and in the dream you will start acting the message you are alive to the message Hi. oh lord help our generation help our generation help our generation in the name of jesus christ hear me if you are a minister of the gospel in this place that means you are in ministry or you are trusting god to be in ministry please wake up i deliver you from laziness hear me ministry is not about suits and agbada and protocol ministry is serious business you know all this and i say this respectfully to our younger generation most of these boys do not understand the gravity of attack that can come to your life when you are in ministry they are just happy and just loiter around in pride one attack will kneel you down you need to be powerful with god are we blessed number two goodness the second principle or territorial dominion is the power of faith Hebrews 11 33 the power of faith you cannot take over a territory when you doubt God you cannot take over a territory 
when you do not believe God Hebrews 11 please read everyone one two read who through faith uh -huh, subdued kingdoms wrought righteousness obtained promises stopped the mouth of lions listen the bible says this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith what is faith your conviction your depth of persuasion on who god is and the integrity of his person that convinces you enough to believe god and take action you will need the audacity that faith brings to reign in life life is not for weak people life is not for risk averse people life is for men and women who are courageous enough to storm the gates of destiny ah, the bible says that listen he said that lot and co were hijacked and captured and abraham said what did i hear you carried my cousin gather all the war men and let us go ah, courage courage faith the righteous are as bold as a lion that lion dimension is not supposed to help you harass people the lion dimension is so that you will be able to stand in the face of situations and say you can bring your best shot satan i will still be standing it takes faith to build a church it takes faith to start tv ministry that will bless people it does not take money it takes faith first it takes faith to raise your children we are a generation that is obsessed with guarantee give me a guarantee that you will be there for me there is no guarantee anywhere in destiny please hear me everybody say faith when god called me to ministry i called my father and my mother and i knelt down before them and i told them god has called me all my life i'm going to be busy serving the purposes of the kingdom my parents said god bless you we bid you godspeed go well that's it i'm not doing well because the church i was serving before did not give me money no sir listen let me tell you this faith creates everything out of nothing did you hear what i said your house now is in your faith the money you need is in your faith please learn the laws of faith faith is predicated upon a revelation that god is able the ability of god and his integrity everything looks impossible till faith brings it god will never tell you what you can do you know you have had god when what he says is bigger than you when god told me of the things that you'll be doing with this ministry around the world when god showed me and told me the things that you the power of faith but i know whom i have believed and i am persuaded lift your voice and pray everyone please pray pray where you are pray from the depth of your heart Please pray from the depth of your heart. Thank 
Kaparaduka Sadebradike de Baladaba. Pray everyone you are praying in the spirit. Second <laughs> Shikabara <laughs> to it's a sacrifice you are making for your destiny. It's a sacrifice you are making for his kingdom. Shikaruta Salabara. Two more minutes, pray in the spirit. Shabarada balakata pradegedesh. Skadebarada balada prakota shada pradegede baladas. Emprata kaparuta shala pradegede balad. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Forget about the temporary inconvenience. That you are going through you are building something for a generation you are building something that will last 
Rain will come and go, but what comes upon you comes and stays. Are we together now? Praise the Lord. Let's continue. The power of faith. Now faith is, the Bible says, the substance of things hoped for and the evidence, the tangibility of things not seen. Hear me, everyone. You want to take over territories, you will need to believe in God. Not believe in an uncle. Not believe in an auntie. Not believe in an asset. Not believe in an investment. You need to believe in God. God is able. I may not know how, but I know that he will build for himself what will bring him glory. Many Christians, and especially our generation, we don't command results because we truly do not walk our faith. We doubt everything and we do not take God at his word. I've given you a little story years ago when I used to bank those days with First Bank. Way before many of these facilities started coming that we now use to make banking easier. Then I would not have money at all in the bank. My faith was that rugged. I'm not saying do it. I remember those days I would pray and trust God for miracle alerts. And I will stand up and start trekking to First Bank. I will queue for hours believing. Because I read in my Bible, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believest that thou receivest it. I took it literally. Many times I didn't find anything, unfortunately. But I didn't realize that what I was gaining was more than the money. I was gaining the flexibility of my faith. The, the ability to believe God at his word. Let me tell you this. When you are walking with God, you need to believe God. There are times God will tell you, wake up and go outside. You will go outside and nothing will happen. He will just say, go back. And your going out was profitless, but your faith is being developed. The idea is not for you to go and see or receive something. The idea is an exercise of your faith so that tomorrow when he says take this nation you say lord i'm able we are well able unbelief is dangerous my only limitation in my life is the voice of god and time my only limitation in life is the voice of god and time time that honors the law of process if God tells me to walk through this crowd to that door, I will not even see that rain is falling. I'm on my way going. Whatever stands my way, the faith that God gives. Do you not know that faith is a shield? You can use faith as a shield. He said, wherein you will quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. You are not the first to be persecuted. You are not the first... To be challenged by evil spirits. It will take your faith to command victory. We are a generation that loves impartation. And impartation is important. But let me tell you something. There are dimensions of destiny work that impartation will not bring. It's a well you have to dig by believing God. If I perish, I perish. When God spoke about koinonia, I believed him enough to take action. When God spoke about the messages being heralded by his angel and taking it around the earth, I believed him. Today we've seen all kinds of miracles over our teachings. You've heard some of them. That someone will buy a brand new flash drive from the place where he bought it and take it home brand new out of the cave slot it in and there are koinonia messages all how do you explain that that's what happened when faith listen you will never see the glory of god until you believe you will never see the glory of god until you believe where a generation that is obsessed with guarantee before we move your only guarantee is the word of God. The 
the word of God. Everything God told me about ministry, about destiny, I believed him. I still do. I still do. From the days when we could not afford bonds and could not afford a proper meal, I believe that was a career of the blessing. From the day when I could not pray for one person to be healed of headache, I believe that his anointing was upon my life. And I believe that he was going to use me. We are going to pray one prayer. I'm going to change my style of teaching now since there is rain. I'm so happy for the rain because it will take away unnecessary formality and keep you to listen. So now you are going to pray. Help my unbelief. Lord, whatever it is that is killing my faith and not allowing me to trust you. Help my unbelief. I claim that I trust you. But it's really my uncle that I trust. I claim I trust you. But it's really my certificate that I trust. I claim I trust you. But it's really my skill, my gift. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. I trust you. I trust you. I trust you. You are praying it for your destiny. You are praying it so that you can command dominion. Lord, I trust you. The grace to believe you. Believe you for my finances. Believe you to open doors. God is not a man that he should lie. God is not the son of man that he should repent. If he speaks, he is able to bring his word to pass. Please pray, pray. Shila parus kariada balara balaba. Koinonia pray. He reigns. He reigns. He is standing by my side to bring his word to pass. He reigns. He reigns. My God is an awesome God. Hallelujah. Listen, hear me. You need to shake off unbelief from your life today and say, Lord, I believe you. I may let everyone call me stupid, but I believe you. Let everyone mock me and laugh at me, but I believe you. I believe you. Your word is true, and I believe you. When you say I am great, I believe you. When you say I am the head, I believe you. When you say I am not the tail, I believe you. 
when you say Gentiles shall come to my light I believe you when you say their kings will come to the brightness of my rising I believe you listen there are some of you in this place God has told you you will stand before nations but as it is you look so weak and you will not believe it you don't know the village I come from I cannot even speak English well that's not what God is saying believe me and let me take you there by myself years ago when God told me he was giving me access to kings and people in government I believed him our very first crusade I demanded to see and let us share fellowship with the king of the land we didn't have the opportunity to do it the first time every one of our crusades that we had gone I demanded an audience with the kings because God told me he would give me access to kings I believe God it's none of your business who my father is it's none of your business who my mother is that's not what God said that's not the condition for his word I believe him the same way some of you are here and God you go to bed and you see yourself carrying the baton of generals you wake up in the morning and say it's a lie it's not for people like us we are the any house stop that that ungodly talk and say Lord with all humility I believe let it come I believe you it was in Port Harcourt I was tending to a sick one of our sick aunties where I was staying in 2007 I was in Port Harcourt and she was on her sick bed she eventually died and I was taking care of her in the teaching hospital there and I was there we were running shifts and then from the I don't know which of the floors now I just looked at um, the window and all of a sudden I was caught up in the vision and in that vision I saw the international headquarters of this ministry I saw 37 flags and I saw white men I saw nations coming I said what is this and God said that's where you are going I believed him I said let's go oh God let's go I believe you God told me I will never beg one king and beg any man for audience I believed him I believed him I believed him do can you believe God one day I remember growing up I told my mother I said do not worry about the things that are happening one day you will eat and never have to beg for bread again and it will be in your lifetime I said it see the righteousness of faith speaks it does not assume you make statements that sometimes you are afraid my wife right now we may be soaking Gary but in the name of Jesus we will give to nations and when you say the devil will speak to your ears and say foolish man respect yourself my faith it reaches out to you I believe your word for me today my faith reaches out to you I believe I believe your word for me, your word for me today listen one day I was praying and the Lord spoke to me and said son I will give you a gold mine I believed it literally I know it may have a prophetic meaning but I believed it literally until three years ago when three kings came together to give me 18.5 hectares of a gold mine God said it and I believed it see listen let me tell you this this ego and the feeling of saying let them not say I believed God and it was a lie 
if you don't throw that thing away to stand and trust God so what if you find out it's not God that said it you readjust and move this ego is why many people will not grow God said it but I'm ashamed I'm afraid let them not laugh at me I remember when God gave me an instruction to empty my entire finance it was a stupid thing it was suicidal but I did it and God told me I would never beg for bread in my life again I remember it was in this ministry God gave an instruction to empty the account of the ministry literally 0.00, .00 and I believed him stupidly believed him one week after that God brought a harvest that till tomorrow we will not recover from but I know whom I believed if God says I will give you a house believe him if God says you will feed nations believe him if God says you will pay the school fees of a generation believe him don't believe your ATM let God be true and every man a liar please hear what I'm telling you today this life and this destiny I stand before the God of heaven and may I be forgiven if it's a show of arrogance but there are many things one of the things that God does with me is he mandates me to declare what he said before it happens there are many things that I've said today prof said something here that really touched me um, in the morning and he said that one of his daughters he remembered when we were meeting those days on campus and that I said that God is bringing mantle a mantle of people for kingdom financiers and he saw his then little daughter she was rolling under the anointing and he looked at her and was wondering and he said that she got a job and within one year bought a car of over three million and he said he was surprised when God says it he would do it if he did it before he can do it again Same God right now Same God right now If you did it before If you did it before When we started the Koinonia worship team, I stopped these guys for many years from going for external ministrations. And I told them, I said, do you know why? I know what God showed me about you. That days will come, you will sing and nations will sing your songs. Stay and be dealt with by the Spirit. Those days, some of them didn't understand because they wanted to go for programs and I said, sit down. Sit down today is amazing the way one by one it's already starting like droplets but it's an avalanche it will come and you will see the songs that come from here songs that will mentor nations songs of warfare songs of victory songs of the throne you see most times we don't believe men till it's too late we we'll say he said it all i believe him i believe you that's why you see me stand to teach you do you know let me confess true confession I was I had a meeting before coming here you know I had a meeting and then um, just briefly met with a family and then a woman before coming preparing to come for koinonia and while I was preparing I was so tired I sat down and I didn't know which one to do to eat or to rest and I stood I was so tired and I was telling the woman I said my God all I want to do now is to sleep but I just got up I said I rebuke that statement there is a generation to mentor there are people to raise and she said ah, apostle I know you as soon as you are done with all this talk the zeal of the Lord that is in you you will quickly go and prepare and stand up and truly you see me standing now I'm done here and I'm counseling for hours seven in the morning i'm out of this city just to go and just perform a function do a few things 
and return sacrifice but that happens because God said so God promised me that he will keep me strong and vibrant I believed him you do what I do in the strength of the flesh you will not be sick you will die I say it without exaggeration you literally will fall down and you will die one day my father warned me and said look my son just do your best take out time once in a while and rest I said I know and I believe I will rest but the king's business requires haste there are destinies to be raised there are impartations to come to nations hallelujah praise the Lord I went to bed to five it was as if I just turned my head and I checked the time and it was morning the last thing I remember was that I was going to take there was water by the side of my bed and a drink and I remember I was preparing that in five minutes I'll just turn and take a sip and I had slept it was already morning and I got up had to brush up on my notes to come why because when you are about his business he will maintain you There are things you cannot lie about not for long it will be clear see let me tell you this god has been faithful to me you see these hands i have laid these hands on different sicknesses and diseases communicable ones i'm not supposed to be alive today based on the things and the people i have touched You must believe God God told me forget about cars and houses focus on me I've raised men already to do that for you I remember when someone came and met me to give me a car I was happy and God said it's not your car just pray for him and let him carry his car and go I wanted to say God the next time you will give me lift <laughs> but I was happy Do you believe what I share with you? Can you spare me five more minutes? Are you tired? I know you are tired. You are just passionate. But listen, let me tell you this. You must love tomorrow more than today to enter that tomorrow. If you love your today more than tomorrow, the door has closed. Closed by you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. When I was in secondary school and the fire of God fell upon us, we started a prayer group and a prayer movement called Operation Catacruz. Yes. We would pray sometimes immediately after preps. It was supposed to be a little one hour prayer. And some of these weak spirited people who are feeling sleepy would just tell them, look, go to your hostel and sleep. One hour it will become a vigil i was made the timekeeper of the school in js2 that was the level of the hand of god that was upon my life quarter to five someone would wake me every day without fail quarter to five that was when i started having encounters with this i didn't even know that they were angelic encounters 15 minutes on the dot to five would tap me i wake up Father, help this generation. In the name of Jesus. Help us to be so consumed by the reality of the realm of the spirit. And the power that that realm wields upon this realm. All you see is not all there is. Hallelujah. So when you hear a word like you are blessed when you hear a word like doors be open many of us just say amen as a christian response to a man of god's prayer but a few people will believe god and take him literally and said when i said amen i said let it be so where is it oh god i said amen i expect an answer the last that i will give us and then we're done territorial advancement the last key let me five minutes and we are done the power are we ready 
the power of consistent results one of the kingdom keys allocated for dominating a territory is consistent results mm. let me tell you this consistent results shows that there is understanding consistent results show that there is knowledge consistent results show that mastery has been attained consistent results years ago i started watching a man who would lift people off wheelchairs and crutches as though it was a joke he would stand and look at them and just pray a simple prayer sometimes even be sarcastic about it and throw the wheelchair and throw the crutch and said walk and that's the end of it in in about six years he raised about nine thousand crutches and wheelchairs his his church is full of crutches around the church i said this is mastery i must go down to see him he was in south africa and i traveled he's going to be with the lord now prophet kobus van rensburg I traveled to South Africa to meet him and I met him and I told him why I was here. I was not there for, for pilgrimage. I was not there for entertainment. I was there for business. I said, I desire this grace. I desire it. It is a grace. 10,000 crutches cannot be mistaken. No. Many unbelieving members, yet they were also raising crutches you could see that they didn't have faith yet they would say walk and joke with it you see many times when the leader that you are under is carrying a grace you will cheaply receive that grace listen when you receive that grace and receive that dimension many times you will see how cheap it works some of you here who are under this ministry and under this covering you will go for meetings casually and just say let's pray and the power of god is here and you'll be as if you are acting drama and even you you have not really studied the dynamics of the anointing many people started getting prosperous in living faith before they read about prosperity it was later they found out they were even sinners because they were not titan yet they were still enjoying abundance say okay lord forgive me now i'll start doing it properly some people were strolling and just saw prayer city prayer was going in and they said let me go and find out what is going on there and from that day they cannot sleep again till they pray because a grace came upon them let me tell you this results are governed by three things one light two please listen results are governed by three things one light two association three graces these are the factors that govern results in this kingdom never forget it light the depth of the spiritual illumination you have as it pertains the area where you want to see result number two association god called abraham and lot went with him and then number three graces if there is any area in your life where you are not commanding results check for these three things one there is a dimension of spiritual illumination that you are lacking number two there is a community of people with that grace that you have not honored and number three there is a dimension of grace that has not rested upon you it is easy to produce results when you know the laws that govern them hallelujah do you know let me tell you as little as this thing our, our time is up as little as what i shared with you is if you understand this mystery my brothers and my sisters there are dimensions that god has cheaply committed to this ministry you will enter into it like a joke you know it pains me when i see certain graces that are so lavishly available but there is no widespread testament of people who have entered that dimension the knowledge you have the spiritual understanding number two your association not just in terms of friends also the covenants the tribe 
that you come under that you are grafted into and then number three the graces that are upon your life any man who is exposed to these tripartite forces will be a strange man upon the earth when I traveled to South Africa to meet Prophet Kobus van Rensburg, I'd wanted going to meet Robert Lerdan and then Charles and Francis Hunter. Unfortunately, I couldn't meet them. I sat down and I listed like an architect the graces that will construct the house. I listed them and I searched for the individuals that had those graces. Like a chef says, I need salt. Where do we buy salt? Sabo. Where do we this is how i listed these graces like a bee and i searched for them one by one i was very very foolish at a point in my life i knew that wisdom will be part of the graces that i would need for my life and i would need for this apostolic office i pursued dr miles moon mike Murdoch, and bishop david oyedeko these were the two dimensions of of wisdom that came to my life I saw the wisdom of God at work in their life and I said this foolishness must end I pursued that grace I pursued it with all my heart are we together yes results whoever commands results becomes the leader whoever commands results becomes the force to reckon with I submit to you that many of the dimensions that you see in my life and in this ministry they are not guesswork there is an exact knowledge that is back of them they will continue to be reproduced again and again when there is increase when there is the outstretched hand of God when there is favor there is prosperity when there is passion and hunger for God these are results please do not join the people who ignore results I'm wrapping up I know the rain is done but just just be patient make sure as they are coming out they are still listening please you are going to pray for result listen to me I told myself God there is no need to be in ministry if I'm not producing results that you bear fruits and that your fruits abide much fruits some of you who are visiting this place for the first time will go back and know that God is here you met him it's called results the next time you come you will not come alone let me tell you empty pews are proof of lack of results it's an uncomfortable truth but it is true are we together in fact empty anything emptiness is proof that you do not understand the laws that govern you i knew i saw the way pastors used to raise money now please i'm not being sarcastic with all respect and all honor to men of god and the body of christ but i saw the way people were being manipulated to raise money i saw the way pastors birthday pastor and i said no this is not bible but then I asked myself a question how will you eat and how will the ministry thrive and then I said I have to go to the Word of God and find out and then I found out that God can open a door for a man that no man can shut I found out that there was an exactitude to the blessing of God let me show you one of the most recent scripture I found first Corinthians 29 12 I apologize we're wrapping up first first chronicles 29 12 first chronicles 29 12 i saw this scripture in my dream i was sleeping and this scripture came and i woke up and i saw it and i rejoiced i said that means god is shifting me to another dimension both riches and what honor come from you you reign over all of them it's a dangerous scripture both riches and honor come from thee you reign over all and in thy hand is power and might 
Look at all the things we need in one verse. Riches, honor, power, might, greatness, strength. God is the owner. I saw it in my dream. I went to sleep home and I saw that scripture. I got up and I searched it. I said, this is this. If this scripture were a clot, it would have faded by now. I've prayed this scripture into my life. See, I stepped into the grace for favor when I prayed for favor for one month. That was my prayer request. Not for a selfish reason. Lord, a man can carry favor bodily. Let me be an example of it. Do you know many times when I pray these things, it's so that I will bring it and you will receive. It's not so much for myself. When I received the grace for long life, it, it was with speed. The day I was coming for Koinonia, it was as if I was going for my wedding reception. Give me a chance, let me stand. These people were singing and I couldn't wait for them to finish singing so that I would climb up. I came with a grace that I did not have. The grace for long life. You can carry grace it's like a fisherman when you catch something and you push your hook you draw it force it out when you see what it is this kingdom is a kingdom of deep mysteries deep mysteries deep mysteries hallelujah both riches and honor come from you thou reignest over all and in thy hand is power and might and in thy hand is to make great look god is the maker of greatness when god selects you to be great he selects you to be the face of a generation it doesn't matter who thinks what or does not think it god has chosen this ministry God has chosen us by the privilege of his grace to be one of the major pillars of what he's doing in this generation. It's an honor we receive. He made it so. Results. We're going to pray. We have to wrap up. Listen to me. Koinonia, hear me. My heart is pained if your life does not command results. Let it first start from your life. Then we'll start commanding results over territories. Was it not Joshua that told the son to stand? Results. There are results that can shut down a nation in one day. A time will come, kings will come to seek the counsel of God from us. And say, what is God saying? He said, kings will entreat your favor. When God told me he would give me access to kings and I would speak to kings in this nation, I believed him. Listen, it's not pride. In two weeks, I'm going to be speaking to all the legislators in this country in a breakfast meeting. All of them gathered in one place, the International Conference Center, and I will be speaking to them, the counsel of God. When God says it, I believe it. Listen. It, this thing is not is not is not about a man i hope you understand what i'm saying results are powerful if you doubt results then what are you at results you must insist that my fig tree must bear fruit i'm tired of green leaves lord this fig tree must bear fruit he shall be like a tree that is planted by the streams of water whose leaves does not wither is someone ready to pray please take two minutes blast in tongues and cry honor my life with results oh god results honor my life with results Please pray. You reign, you reign, hallowed, you reign, you reign. Ah! Uh -huh.
Jesus, the grace that will cause you to reproduce every result you see here, may that grace rest upon your life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the grace that will bring you into strange dimensions, wonder-walking dimensions of results, may that grace rest upon your life. I speak upon your life access to kings may that grace come upon you access to kings in the name of Jesus Christ access to kings in the name of Jesus Christ I have set before you an open door I decree and declare the kind of influence that God can put upon a man influence is not a carnal desire it is so that you can rise to a point where the nations can look up to your life in the name of Jesus the grace that can cause a generation to look at a man and follow Christ through that man may that grace rest upon you now may that grace rest upon you now the grace for strange signs and wonders wonders of the spirit may that grace come upon you now may that grace rest upon you now thank you Lord Jesus every man who must honor and recognize what you carry I speak to them by prophecy in this season and in the name of Jesus in this month of October I command someone must celebrate your grace someone must celebrate what you carry for the sake of his majesty in the name of Jesus I compel men to discern the grace upon your life I compel men to discern the hand of God upon you I compel men to descend the unction upon you. Lord, we look to
sit down. Why, why do people, I want to start my teaching tonight with a simple question. Brothers and sisters, help me answer this question. Why do people, why do born again families, why do communities and territories and individuals continue to walk in a life of perpetual failure, perpetual oppression, in spite of all the opportunities and the anointings that are available? It's a tragic situation. To have men and women, well-meaning believers who love and fear God sincerely, never have anything work well in their life. I identified a few reasons. And I want you to learn this very quickly because we are going to pray. Please, can you take this anointing? Just, can you take it and keep it here? Is that okay? It's, it's, it's nothing fetish. I'm just it's just an instruction. Just just soak the glory, just drop it here. Thank you. Listen, why do these things happen to people? Number one, very quickly. The first reason I identified and I wrote it here is. It may be a long sentence, but just listen carefully. The conscious exclusion of Jesus in their lives and affairs. The conscious exclusion of Jesus, not God, not God, Jesus in their lives and affairs. The number one reason why certain people will never have a testimony. The conscious exclusion of Jesus in their lives and their affairs. I don't mean they are not born again. That's not what I'm saying. The conscious exclusion, like you want to have a serious meeting, then you tell somebody, please, can you go outside? The conscious, willful exclusion of Jesus in their lives and affairs. Are we together now? You see, there is this arrogance and over-dependence of our intellectualism. I'm not against intellectual prowess. You should know that. I'm an advocate of mental development and so on and so forth. But listen to me. Over-dependence on our abilities, our connection, our education, our wisdom, business skills, etc these things make us to consciously exclude jesus in our lives usually we include jesus only when we think we are not trained enough for what we are supposed to do oh i went to school doesn't jesus know i'm a master's holder jesus wait this is the issue of intelligence when we get to spiritual issues we bring you and then he steps out because he's, he's a very very gentle man Pride over dependence on our ability. Proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5 and 7 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Listen, and lean not on your own understanding. Right? The next verse says, In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your path. Verse 7 says, Do not be wise. Be not wise in your own eyes. It says, Fear the Lord and turn away from him. What is the evil? Depending on your strength. Let me tell you why God is humbling so many people. This arrogance of being self-made. Self-made degree holder. Self-made doctor. Self-made professor. Self-made millionaire. Self, there is nobody that is self-made. Everybody is spirit assisted. Whether they know it or will accept it or not. Are we together? The first reason why many people never get God's assistance. Over dependence on our ability. Oh, my power, my might. I built this great ministry. I have sons and daughters to show for it. I built so, so, so and so. 
I'm an intelligent man. Everybody tells me. That attitude excludes you. will never find the hand of God that way. Hear what I'm saying. You may not like what I'm saying, but just pay attention. Over dependence on our abilities. When the miracle happens, then we religiously come and say, Lord, I give you glory. But even you, you know you are just doing the testimony so that men will hear what you have done. Not because you were sincere with giving God glory. It's God's will to us that I may decrease that she alone may increase. Huh? All my qualification, all my business acumen, all my parenting skills, all my CEO mentality, when you come before God, you pack those things, box them and drop them and glorify his name. Is the reason why many cannot worship him. Is the reason why many cannot do anything because to them they are superstars and everywhere, including a church, is the stage. Apostle Joshua Selman, did you see him as he came? Did you see how people were running up and down? And we stupidly take God out of our ministry. You see that? Yeah. That's what a lot of people have come. You left seeking God and became a seed of a church and you started running it by yourself. That's why it's killing you. Let me tell you something with God. One thing I know about God is not that I'm told. God is a jealous God. I don't know how you want to interpret it. Use Hebrew and Greek is still the same thing. God is a jealous God. The jealousy of God is the dimension of him that fiercely fights anything that attempts to displace him. Ask Lucifer what happened to him. There was war even in heaven. The conscious exclusion. Oh, I'm healthy. Why should I pray? I'm healthy. Why should I fast? So we have all this fire brigade approach. Only when things go wrong, we now come and bribe God with money. We bribe God with tight. We bribe God with our shoe. And the time we wrap something and say, God, just take and solve my problem. And God is saying, am I that cheap to you? Is this all you know about me? Oh, I'm a business tycoon. I'm a multi-millionaire. I have, I have all kinds of companies running everywhere. And then, by the time your wisdom fools you, you now come and say, oh God, God, you know, I, I, you said you're a tycoon. Tycoons are intelligent people. You continue. Listen, when other men are thriving in themselves, you better know why God blesses you. And be outspoken about it. A testimony of the love and the faithfulness of God. Are we together? Conscious exclusion of God. The embarrassment, still on that same point. The embarrassment of the need for assistance and dependence of God, on God. The embarrassment that comes with acknowledging your need to be helped. There are many people who like to say, nobody helped me. Nobody helped me. I did it by myself. Nobody helped me. I rose from rags to riches by myself. I became a millionaire by myself. I became anointed by myself. No man of God laid hands on me. I was rolling under the floor in the presence of God. Then an angel appeared to me and said, son, stand up. From today, I anoint you over this and that. And we talk those foolish things. Most people find it embarrassing to say their lives are a product of many contributions. We think that the moment you acknowledge, ah, at this point in my life, God used a genie to help me. At this point in my life, God used Sam to help me. It makes you cheap. So we rather trivialize all the help and we join God in the equation. Okay, God, I gave my life to you. That's all right. That's your own honor. Enjoy that one. But this one, wisdom, I, I have it. A man can receive nothing until it is given to him. Have you read that? A man can receive nothing. That's why many people, the lady will come and say, look, by God's grace, so it's not pride, but am I not beautiful? And you find out that you never married. Nobody will even tell you good money. And you are wondering why. 
with all this beauty. You see that the brothers are blind. Believe me, they are not blind. But there is a God that gives husband and wife. And you have excluded that God out of your life because you think you are okay. Or a brother who got a small job, 150,000. I say, God forbid, I can't marry any kind of lady. I've I mean, I, I paid my price. I have 150,000 naira job. Let me describe the kind of lady. And God says, This is a rich, a stupid, stupid boy who does not know how God assists men to rise. Then they now threaten you that they are going to downsize people. And they, you, you are shocked to find out that although you are, you are brilliant, your name is there. You are about to go. God will say, use your power and your might and keep yourself there. Total dependence on Jesus. Outspoken dependence on Jesus. Not that you say they know. We don't know. Say it. Let your life show it. Let your ringtone show it. Let everything show it. You know this Christian thing, I don't want to put it on my head. You better put it on your head. That is the symbol of safety. You better put it on your head. In this wicked world now, put it on your head clearly so that you'll be free. Are we together? I don't know about you, but I depend on him. I depend on him. If God does not assist me, no man can assist me. If God does not help me, he said, I will lift up my eyes onto the hill. From when, how can I write the equation of my life and then add God? I will not even add God. He's the Alpha Omega. If there is anything to add, maybe it's me that somewhere I will, he will even allow me to add and say, okay, and my addition is my alignment. I will tell that. Please, I want you to repent tonight. Especially some of us here and there that have results here and there in our lives. In business, like that gentleman who came out smiling, that he, he made one million. You see that? It's a wonderful testimony. You can now stand up and say, No, I must get my own one million. And then start the journey of pain in your life. If God does not give a man anything, you can have it. You can't have it. You have to understand this. That's why people don't get saved. Let me tell you. That's why people don't get saved. And Jimmy, if you point someone here and tell him there is a multi-million naira business in Abuja you want to connect him with, will he be too busy? He won't be too busy. The wife will say, honey, but I thought we were supposed to have a time together. I said, which time? I will slap you now. You know, with the money, we'll have a time together. Let's go to Abuja. Because you consider it to be valuable. Valuable. So when the house of God becomes something you have to advise yourself to go, it's a sign you are excluding God out of your life. Are we together now? He said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go. He didn't go alone. Let us go. Let us go. I've said it again. Please, if you're a parent here, hear me. As much as God grants you grace, involve your children in your conviction. Especially if your children are as small as this are, are, are little children. Are we together? Don't leave the children with nanny and say they used to make noise. They should make noise. It's better to make noise in the presence of God than keep them at home and allow a strange spirit enter them. And begin the journey of pain in your life. Let them come and sleep here. Nobody's complaining. I'd like you to pray one minute while you are seated and say, Lord, you are not one of those important things in my life. I repent for just acting you. After doing everything I think is the reason why my life is moving, I now add you to feel spiritual. Lift your voice and say, I repent. I repent of that pride. I repent of that pride. Kabbalah ko I acknowledge you. Listen. The Bible says, except the Lord builds a house. Except the Lord builds a ministry. Except the Lord builds a family. Except the Lord builds a business. They labor in vain. He didn't say they will not do it. They labor in vain. Pouring water in the basket. Pouring water in a basket. 
it will never fool. Pour the water in the whole world in a basket. No miracle will make it fool. So that's the first reason. Still on point one. Let's look at a scripture God showed me. Isaiah 31. Verse 1 to 3. Media, is it possible? Can we have it? Isaiah 31. Verse 1 to 3. God gave me a sound warning that I should give it to us. Not like a threat or something. But I think it's an advice that is very instrumental to us. Isaiah 31 from verse 1 to 3. Let's just hurry up before they find it. The danger of trying to use the world's way of doing things to get God's results. Are we together now? Still part of point one is an addition I noted here and I must explain it. The danger of using the world's formula and expecting God's result. It does not happen. The world has its way of getting money. The world has its way of parenting. The world has its way of getting fame. Listen. The world has its way of, li of, of living long. The world has its way of understanding. When you come to God, the kingdom of God is an entirely different system. The Bible says you are in the world, but not of the world. Right? Isaiah 31, you can write it and go and read it. It says, woe to them that go down to Egypt for help. Woe to them that go down to Egypt. Egypt is the place of captivity. The dark world. This includes going to Habalis. Please look up. Let me talk to us. Are you not amazed, Jimmy, at the rate at which people, Christians, run to the village, run to Habalis. We join God and we join a little of something they give you like a belt on your waist. You are still, I don't care even if it's Jesus that is written on it. A Habalist is a Habalist. They gave you something. They said during the exam, you should just take it. You have to stand by one in the afternoon. Exactly one. Take it with your right hand. It's nonsense. I don't care even if you are reciting whatever. Be careful. Everything that is of God is consistent with this one. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Very, very important. Woe to them who go down to Egypt for help. God has his way of doing things. You want to build a house. The world has its way of building a house. The kingdom has its way of building a house. You want to access wealth and prosperity. The world has its way of doing things. Many believers go down to Egypt. And we try to access help. Whereas there is no help in Egypt. For 430 years they were in Egypt. There was no help. Until they left Egypt and they began to walk. Are we together? I'm not against enlightenment, but some of these, some of these junk materials we read all around that attempt to suggest facts and figures that negate the word of God, yet we adopt them and we call it civilization. Please look at me, look at me. Let me have your attention. I don't care. The word of God transcends every generation, whether you are young, whether you are old. There are irrefutable truths that defines the standards of God. Say amen. Woe to them who go down to Egypt for them. You want to build a house. You are putting yourself under pressure. The world says go to the bank and go and collect loan. Correct? Go and collect loan. And you don't inquire from God. You run and go to the bank. They give you a loan. The next day an armed robber comes and puts a gun. And says you better bring out that loan. I was in the bank. Bring everything out. And then you have two loans to pay. The one you need to build the house. And all of that. And the journey starts. And at the end of your life. You have high blood pressure. You have stroke. The world says if you want to keep a wife. Beat her. Beat her once. Let her see you beat her, then she will know you are man enough. That's the world's way. Now you are born again, but those advices are still coming once in a while. Your uncle says, that advice I gave you, I think he's working. Are we together? The Bible says there, 
divine health is a possibility. I'm not against medicine and all of that. But divine health is a possibility. And for you, you have never tried to stretch your faith for once to believe God and say, I can live here. Are we together? The Bible says favor is possible. The world's fashion of favor is bribe and corruption. You force it. Go to them who go down to Egypt. There is a way God finances and builds his church. You didn't find out. And so you play gimmicks on people. All kinds of gimmicks on people. And you find out that every Sunday, every Saturday, you are always on deficit. God gave you a child. There is a formula for paying the school fees of the child. Don't complain that there's no money. Go to God and find out. Lord, I was pregnant for nine months. I'm aware that there are women who have not been able to give birth. How did you design funding the destiny of this child? Please hear what I'm saying because this is a very serious issue. How many husbands and wives come together? How many young people, how many leaders sit down and say, look, we are confused. Let's get God in this picture. Lord, we are absolutely confused. We need you to step in. They say, let's deliberate. Then later on, when it gets too hard, they say, let's pray in tongues for five minutes. God, who lied to you that adding God to your life is a minus? Who lied to you that adding God to your business is a minus? Who lied to you, listen, that adding God to your relationship is a minus? Who deceived you that adding God to your church is a minus? Adding God to your friends and driving out the bad ones is a minus. Oh, I don't want to lose it. You better lose it. If, if adding God to his life is what will make him to go, that's a sign that you have been delivered. Please hear what I'm saying. There are people seated hearing me. You have never given your heart to Jesus Christ. You have never. You've had preachers speak again and again. Every time they talk, you just sit down outside and say, ah, I was touched by ah, ah. See how this guy is really talking about God. Now, brothers and sisters, I don't mean to scare you, but let me just tell you one truth that we have not had for a long time. Hellfire is free. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are people there. Some left this morning. As you were coming for Koinonia, some people left. They are there right now as we speak. Preach whatever you want to preach. But I can tell you one thing. Hell is very, very so you can be as arrogant as you want to be and say I'm an atheist I went to America and I spent two, two years I went to Harvard I, I, that's alright you are permitted to carry your foolishness for as long as it last but I can tell you one thing only a fool will say in his heart there is no God. please hear me some of us are parents and I say all due respect there are many fathers and there are many mothers some listening to me by radio your family is most diving because as the priest of the home, you have refused to bring God. When your wife is praying, you now say, honey, make sure you pray for me. You just enter the blanket. No. No. Let me challenge any young man here planning to marry. If you are not more spiritual than the woman you want to marry, you are in trouble. You better catch up. Join prayer band on Tuesday. Join, have a personal prayer time and double up. And I'm not joking. I'm not joking. Your spirituality defines everything. I wish above all things that you prosper, even to the degree that your soul prospers. What shall it profit a man? The Bible says, if you gain the whole world, if you have all the ministries in the world, and at the end of it, lose your soul. Praise the Lord. So there are people seated hearing me. You, you really need to ask yourself this question. Have, have I been saved? Am I born again? I know I came for healing. I came for a miracle. I know I'm 65 years old. I know I'm 12 years old. Are you born again? Have you really brought Jesus to your life? An open invitation to say, Lord, I'm tired of mismanaging my life. My intelligence is failing me woefully. I come to you. I come to you. As a child will run to his father. 
right the prodigal son came to himself and said look how many hired servants has my father I will arise and I will go to my father and I will say father I have sinned against you and against heaven I am not worthy to be called your son take me now as one of your servants and the Bible says while he saw him coming afar off he ran embraced him kissed him and restored and put back the seed network. the evil in the world is too much for any man to be living his life without Christ that you took beer and drove yourself from Karuna to Zaria is the mercy of God. You keep trying it. One day you just open your eyes and find out you are not in the world. Disrespect for God and his values. I'm going to make an altar call now. We need to make it. The atmosphere is right for an altar call. Two altar calls in one. Please pay attention two altar calls. Just carry the lady gently. You are here seated listening to me. Those online pay attention to Jesus is calling you. The Bible says come unto me all ye that are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest. It says take upon me my yoke and learn of me for I am lowly in heart. Right? It says my burden is easy my yoke is light. The one you are carrying is killing you. Two sets of people. One, those who are saying, man of God, as you are speaking, the Holy Spirit is telling me, I need Jesus. Not I need God. Not I need God. God is many things to many people. There is no other name given unto man by which men must be saved. God does not save men. There is a name. Jesus. Jesus. Are we together? This westernization that has made everything called God. There are people God is a donkey. There are people God is a tortoise. There are people God is a small image somewhere looking like something. But we are talking about Jesus, the name that is above all names. When he is lifted, then he will draw all men to himself. The second category of people who are coming out here are those who are saying, man of God, sincerely, I've responded to an altar call, but I cannot say my life is a reflection of the will of God. I don't care about the house of God. I don't care about the things of God. My children should do anything if they want to do. I do anything I want to do. I watch anything I want to watch. I do anything I want to do. Please, let's save time. I'm going to count one to five. Nobody's closing his eyes. There are people in all the overflows scattered around. As you hear my voice, I want you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come right in front here. And say, man of God, I need you to talk to, 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 to pray for me. One. Run like there's fire on the mountain. If you are too big, please go back. Two. Come and stand and passionately cry before God. Three. Passionately cry before God. Lord, I've come to you from the depth of my heart. I can't keep playing games with you. Keep coming. Are you running? Leave your friend if he's trying to throw you back. There's a spirit in him that will soon be casted out. If your friend holds you back, I assure you there is a spirit. Leave him and run and come. Don't say, I came with my girlfriend. I came with my boyfriend. Run to Jesus with all your heart. Keep clapping, please. Motivate them as they're coming. Man of God, it's as if you've been talking to me. Yes, you are right. You are the one I've been talking to. And Jesus is calling you. Rush to him. Say, Lord, I'm tired. I, I can't keep fighting this for long. I got admission into APU and I became something else. I, I became a graduate and I became something else. I'm not ashamed. I'm coming to you. It is like an award ceremony. You are not closing your eyes. Please run to Jesus. The Lord is still telling me there are people. In the day that you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. Come and stand before him. And shame the devil over your destiny. Shame the devil over your destiny. Listen, many of us standing here are young people. One day you are going to be a father. One day you are going to be a mother. 
the father and the mother you hate right now that made you got into your lifestyle they had an opportunity when they were young they ignored jesus but embraced education so they became graduates without christ and they married without christ although the wedding was done in the church and the disaster is the values of the kingdom are not reflected in our family the average young man seated here in the next five to ten years he will be married your conviction is what you are going to transfer to your home every stupid man today was a stupid young man correct he married and just wore suit on that stupidity and took it to his home we are sick and tired of a godless society a society that has no respect for god we we are pushing god out and say look look you know i'm i'm too fine for all this this church thing no addiction is the trend addiction for god outspoken addiction listen i salute you ladies and gentlemen don't come out as if you are going to the graveyard nobody's morning is a thing of joy i'm about to lead you to make the greatest decision in your life there are many of you years after now you will be leading others ladies you are standing here for the sake of your children one day they will look at you and say mommy thank you for giving your life to jesus when you were 21. thank you for not joining this nonsense that is producing tears there's no magic about a great future you must run to jesus like there's fire on the mountain and for those of us who are sitting down that you are sitting down doesn't mean you should not be here because there are people that are still supposed to be here but while you are seated you must say lord make me serious with you an addiction for you an addiction for you an addiction for you some of you are crying don't be ashamed of your tears yeah i'm not here to condemn you no no with all the love in my heart if i had my way i would hold every one of you because you have made a decision that will save a generation everyone who rejects christ has implicated his generation because you can only give what you have those of you in front please lift your right hand seriously lift it high to the heavens and say after me lord jesus please say it from your heart say it again lord jesus don't worry you can cry it's all right lord jesus don't baby look at me look at me i love you there is a boy that disturbs you eh? send that boy a text and say joshua selman ask you to send him a text you never come near you again because you love god and god wants to use you hmm? you keep loving god and that boy keeps i don't know who he is drive him far from your life tell him i said so in jesus name huh? so you pray that prayer say after me lord jesus i love you with all my heart this night i have had your word and i come to you asking you to forgive me asking you to cleanse me i believe i can be better than i am now so i don't fight you again come into my heart it belongs to you take everything that is mine and make it yours use me for your glory every condemnation every guilt upon my life lives now and forever in jesus name keep your hands lifted i want to pray for you father look at the ones you died for they have come genuinely and openly to express before your people a commitment to love you and a commitment to live for you father i pray that you honor their sincerity in the name of jesus i pray that the holy spirit will come upon your life and from today the appetite you used to have you will no longer have it forever i release grace upon you to drive some people from your life and i release grace upon you to invite others into your life I decree and declare that any association, I don't care how long they have been with you, and don't favor the cause of the kingdom, may today be your parting with them forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Thank you for this great decision. Now, please hold on. I want you to walk. The service is still on. Very quickly, and you'll be back. Two instructions, please listen. 
One, you will follow that lady when I'm done talking and we're going to have your details. Please make sure you give your accurate details, your name and your number and whatever information. We need it because it will help us to be able to follow you up. Number two, and please let this be an announcement to the whole house. As a general rule, every time you are born again, the moment you are born again, automatically, you are a member of the prayer department for one month. Automatically. Are we together? When you are born again, so that for those of us who brought them now, if any of your loved ones is among the people, you encourage them. Automatically, for the next one month, you are a member of the prayer department. It's a model we have used from the onset of this ministry. When people get born again, the next thing is to give them an opportunity to have a kingdom community. Once they have a community of like-minded people that love God, they will have the strength to be able to shake up the things that are limitations. But if you leave them alone, sooner or later, the pressure will be too much on them and they will go back. Are we together now? So please, the prayer department, 4 to 6 at Rema Chapel. Rema Chapel is just across. For those of you who are not domiciled in Zaria, no problem. When you get your various ministries or places, you can always connect with living churches around and then be part of the prayer team at least for a month. It will build your spirit, you will be filled with the Holy Spirit and then you begin to walk understand spiritual things and then from there your growth continues the lord bless you in the name of jesus please go ahead and follow the lady please you should create multiple points for them appreciate them everyone if i told you receive your job you will clap with all your heart keep clapping till they go Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Please, those coordinating them, coordinate them very fast. There should be multiple systems so that you coordinate them very fast and then they'll be back to come and catch up with the service. There are quite a number of them, so please, if they need some hands, we should have a few people assist them very quickly. Number two, the second reason why people continue a life of hardship and misery. Second reason, quickly, number two. Is ignorance and disobedience to God's principles ignorance and disobedience to God's principles will be very fast please just five minutes let's wrap this up very quickly so that we can begin to pray ignorance and disobedience to God's principles Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 15 it says the labor of the fool wearied every one of them because he does not know the road to the city not because there is no road he does not know it Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 15 ignorance and disobedience to God's principles write one more scripture Ephesians chapter 4 verse 18 Ephesians chapter 4 verse 18 we may not have time just write them you can go and read them during your personal time with God ignorance and disobedience to God's principles look up please you know that one of the mandates that God has given us as a ministry is to teach men the principles of the kingdom. I am, I am obsessed and passionate about helping believers understand the systems in the kingdom and how to walk through those systems and experience victory in their lives. So ignorance and disobedience is very costly. Number three, please, quickly. Number three. The third reason why people go through perpetual hardship hardship in their life is demonic oppression the reality of demonic oppression write it down Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 the reality of demonic oppression demonic forces are real the activity of the dark world is real the Bible did not leave us in confusion as to the fact that the whole world lies in wickedness first john chapter 5 verse 19 first john chapter 5 verse 19 he says we are of god and the whole world lieth in wickedness 
the condition to experience the, the fierce wickedness in this world is that you are born you know um, hold on there is there is a popular adage or cliche that people have all around the moment there is any kind of demonic intrusion they say who did i offend you've had that statement who did i offend though i didn't offend it. i left the village peacefully look he said in iniquity did my mother conceive me you know the meaning of that i was never given an opportunity to choose whether i want the devil to oppress me or not the moment you are born that reality implicates you at once do not ever trivialize the fact that the dark world is still at work in our days at work does not mean in dominion at work means there is a consistent attempt by the forces of darkness to if allowed jeopardize every part of your christian life and every part of your christian experience finances family career education spiritual life every area satan will not leave any stone unturned to see that it destroys you john 10 10 says the thief cometh not but for to steal to kill and to destroy he said but i am come that ye may have life and that you may have it more abundantly first thessalonians chapter 2 verse 18 paul himself speaking he says once and again i desire to come unto you but satan hindered us first thessalonians chapter 2 verse 18 but satan hindered us satan can hinder men that's why god puts a miracle service like this to come and break down that that system that he has built over the lives of people I gave us an admonition earlier on while speaking and I want to repeat it. Never consult mediums, the occult, and so on and so forth for help. No. Never consult mediums, listen, the occult, the dark world, all kinds of extraterrestrial, astral, transcendental activities in an attempt to receive help. Jesus said, I am the door. Every other person who comes came through the window. I am the door. I am the door. When you come in through the door, you are safe. You come in through the window, there are side effects. Two scriptures. Oh, I wish it could be projected, but I'm sorry. I'm sorry about the whole. Um, Leviticus chapter 20, verse 6. Leviticus chapter 20, verse 6. To play the harlot after them. I will even set my face against that soul. And I will cut him from off among his people. People who consult what? Familiar spirits. People who consult mediums. Occultic activities. Right? Many of them parading as different things. You go to your village. You enter one room. They say sit down. We want to do something for you. Incisions all around for protection. Say, eat this razor blade. Anybody that touches you, that razor blade will strike you. Demonic activities. They concoct one kind of drink and they tell you, take it. And recite all kinds of things. The Bible says, whoever does that, I personally, I will set my face against it. Ah, but apostle, I've done it already. You are welcome to the miracle service. That's why you will be delivered. That's why you will be sent for from all of that to wives who put their husbands in bottles for correct behavior to husbands who put their wives all kinds of, of things people have people have arrows in their ha homes and, and, and weapons that are, are demonic with, with charms let's be sincere things you hide under your carpet you are just sitting down you see strange men enter your house to slaughter all kinds of animals they wake you in the middle of the night 
all that consult mediums. All that consult mediums. Some persons may be listening to me online. Let, let me tell you, when God convicts you, adjust. Some of us are sincere, but our families, especially those of us who are coming from other faiths into the Christian life, or automatically you need to be prayed for. Automatically. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 10 and 11. Deuteronomy chapter 18, quickly please. We trust God for a very quick walk tonight. Thank God by His grace we've made the altar call. Deuteronomy 18, verse 10 and 11. If you are not there, just listen. There shall not be found among you anyone who maketh his son, parents, listen, or daughter pass through the fire. Or who useth divination. Or an observer of times. Or an enchanter. Or a witch. Or a charmer. Zarya's um, city. Where are we? Or a consultor of mediums. Listen, I'm listening to them. Or a wizard. Or a necromancer. Next verse says, for all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. Men pass through strange fires, necromancy, transcendental meditation, astral travels, all kinds of extraterrestrial demonic activities. The Bible warns, this is Africa and I understand. I'm not an American speaking. I've told you my story. Don't think that I was born out of a Bible. There is almost no family here that is innocent. Tra just trace it just one generation after you. Someone worshipped something somewhere. Or didn't receive Christ and was serious. So it's still the same thing. Somebody was involved somewhere. And many people have been victims of those kinds of people. Hallelujah. Demonic powers are real. Their agenda to stop the purposes of God over your life are real. But one thing the Bible says is that the light shines in the darkness. Hallelujah. And it says the darkness cannot comprehend. That's why I know that every force that has held anyone's life today, in the name of the Son of the living God, it must give way. The last reason why do people remain under the yoke, the fierce yoke of oppression? The last reason they trivialize and ignore the place of spiritual empowerment the last reason i'll give tonight they trivialize and ignore the place of spiritual empowerment yes we are social beings but brothers and sisters we are also spiritual beings every man must be empowered jesus himself told them tarry ye in jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high tarry tarry don't be in a rush. Tarry until you have an evidence that can keep darkness away. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord. 6 verse 10, Ephesians. Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the power of his might. Finally, brethren, finally, koinonia, be strong in the Lord, not in yourself. Be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the power of his might. Isaiah 10, 27. It shall come to pass in that day, right? That the burden shall be lifted from off your shoulder and the yoke shall be taken away from your neck and the body shall be destroyed because... This is the singular reason why burdens are destroyed. Because of the anointing. Because of the anointing. Do not reject empowerment. Listen. Empowerment is not for men of God. Are we together? Empowerment is not for those doing church and ministry and evangelism. Empowerment is not for leaders. Empowerment is for every believer. Every believer. The empowerment of the Holy Spirit is your basis for establishment. 
You cannot live in today's wicked world without empowerment. Apostle Joshua Selman does not guarantee to be there for you every time you need him. But there is an anointing you can receive from the Holy Spirit. Standing in partnership with the Lord will raise a standard against him. I believe in running to men of God to help you and pray for you. But there is no man of God that gives you guarantee of 100% attention. It's impossible. There are times you can call me and I'm sleeping. Why? Because I'm human. But there is a keeper of Israel who neither sleeps nor slumbers. And the Bible says that he's willing. That outpouring of power. Part of the things you must trust God for tonight is an empowerment. An empowerment against fear. An empowerment against all kinds of oppressions of darkness. Fear. Right? Perfect love. Cast out fear. For fear hath torment. There are many of us who need empowerment. You are afraid. Just to go from here to Kaduna, you are praying in tongues all through the car. Not praying in tongues of faith. Just fear. You want to nod your head and rest a little. The driver just might say, Driver, be careful, oh, please. Fear. Fear makes us suspect everyone. You come to someone's house, they put food and you look at it. I say, No, they, they put spoon here. Why is this person? This person wants to kill me. Fear. You need an empowerment. If you don't say, I, I'm old, don't be afraid. You are now a man. No, there's no such thing as a man. A man means you have an anointing. Hello? A man means you have what? No matter how old you are, gentlemen, listen to me. If this thing is not on you, you are not yet a man. Because gone are the days where you fight with horses and chariots. Someone stands and speaks. And a wicked arrow lands upon your life with all your energy and physical stature. Makes rubbish and nonsense out of you. The woman who makes incantation, you can beat her physically. But she will call you from Italy to come and die you. Men and men who have power. Power with God. Power with God. Power with God. They invoke a charm against you before they finish their death. That's the registration to me that not every word is fake. Come on now. They bring your picture as they, as they show it. The fire they are trying to invoke comes out from the picture and burns the face of every devil to ashes. And you are not praying. It's not like you are praying at home. Maybe you are even cheating. What is working? My head. My head. My, my head shall thou exalt like the horn of an unicorn and I shall be anointed with fresh oil. The anointing is a powerful mystery. It's a mystery till we get to heaven we will understand. The anointing is not falling down and shaking. The anointing is not people moving around. Those are just effects. Boy, the anointing is a force. A force that works. You speak with the anointing, you get results. You speak because you are shouting. You have some truth. See that? You make bold claims without the anointing. They visit you in the night. You make bold claims with the anointing. Whether day or night, you are still in control. How terrible are thou in thy ways. Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves to thee. In the name of Jesus from tonight, some of you, as you are going back home, you are not even saying anything. As you are going back to your house, it's an announcement to the spiritual climate of your territory. You are saying, no more. No more. No more. Nobody passes with all this wicked spirit and then it lands on you. No, I'm not, I'm not a dumping ground. They don't cast a demon from a crusade ground and it's moving through arid regions and just sees me and lands on. Don't think I'm joking. Demons still find men. You come out fine and return back with a fierce spirit on you and find out that you are suddenly getting angry. You were not like that. You are an angry person. You could never insult your husband. But something comes and says, everybody is a human being. No, a stranger has found entrance into your life. Ah, I'm born again. No demon can live in me. Please keep quiet. You are a spirit. You live in a body. Connecting your spirit and your body is a soul. Very big space for any amount of demons to stay. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Please take it seriously. 
There are some habits people you cannot use resolution to stop. Oh man of God, I love God, but I just sit down and once I'm on my laptop, the next thing I'm watching, I can't help it. No, 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 no. It's not about trying to help it. There is an anointing that must stand up on your life in heaven because it's a spirit. Fill me up. instruction the Lord gave me that at the point this oil touches the head of everyone then we begin to speak dramatic miracles dramatic deliverances bring them out lift your hands in the name of the Lord Jesus, the Son of the Living God, everyone online and here by the mystery of this oil, any stranger, Kabataya, any covenant, every wicked spirit manipulating the destiny of anyone, I decree and declare right now. By the fire of the spirit, let there be deliverance right now, inside and outside. Yokes, inside and outside. Kabatotota, rekete I stand upon this oil. I stand upon this place. I decree and declare: anyone under any demonic manipulation. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I command the spirits, I command the devils, off you go from their lives now. Off you go from their lives now. Bring them out. Lift your hands. At the count of three, you will shout, Jesus. My God, I see massive deliverance outside. Massive deliverance outside. Freedom for people and families. At the count of three. That's all I want you to do. 
Thank you, Jesus. Let there be complete deliverance. One, two, shout it now. Three. Jesus. be destroyed. Ghosts be destroyed. Every spirit, every force, every spirit, every force, every spirit, every force, every spirit. Lift your hands. The spirits that cause failure, that everything you do, you don't succeed. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I command them to leave you now. Leave you now. Leave you now. The spirit of failure. The spirit of failure. The spirit of failure. Lift your hands. My God. I want to pray for students because I'm seen like a blue flame. There is a spirit that which haunts the academics of students. You are a student here, get ready. Liberty comes to you at the count of three. One, two, three. Leave them right now. Leave them right now. They are academics. Oh, they have not been able to pass job. They have not been able to graduate. I command that spirit. You must go now. You must go now. You must go now. Lift your hands. I don't know what force of darkness is responsible for bad luck in the lives of men. Simple things that should work out never work out. Now, in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, whoever is a victim of that oppression, as I speak now, let the fire of the Holy Ghost land upon your life right now. Land upon your life right now. Land upon your life right now. Help them, please. Bad luck. Your hands. I tell you, there are so many miracles happening. Listen, listen. I want to pray. I want to pray for men and women, inside and outside. Listen to me. Do you know hardship is a cause? Hardship is more than poverty. Poverty is absence of money. Hardship is a hard life. No matter how high you rise, your life becomes hard. Lift your hands and pray for families, not just individuals. So the power of God will come upon you for your family. I'm standing here and the Lord is asking me to face the minister's seat and stretch my hands. Every spirit of hardship, every spirit of hardship, every spirit of hardship, I command freedom. I command freedom. Now I turn to the congregation. At the count of three, shout Jesus and that devil must leave your family. One, two, three. Go, 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 go. Help that lady. Go, 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 go. Hardship. 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 I command you. In the name of Jesus, I command you. You must go. I command you. You must go. You are a spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our time is gone. Who is Veronica? Veronica. Veronica. Just leave them. We are praying. All those under the anointing, I set you free now. I command those devils, leave them forever. Leave their families forever. Strangers, go right now. 
the Bible says they will run when they hear his voice out of their hiding place. Therefore, I command every stranger in anyone's life and destiny. It's time for you to live and never return. Veronica, you are Veronica. Where are your parents? I'm seeing a light. Is your mother here? She's in Saria, that's what I mean. Right here. Go and tell your family that God is bringing a major breakthrough. I'm seeing crying all over. But I'm prophesying to you that a, a breakthrough, a new chapter opens for the family in the name of Jesus Christ. Now listen, I'm just going to speak to a few people. But before I pray, I want you to check yourself. There are people you will check yourself and the pain is gone. You check yourself and there is a miracle. Run where you are. Don't sit down. The moment you find out there's a miracle, run. Pastor Jimmy will be here. Immediately run. We'll just take a few testimonies and then I'll minister healing very quickly. We have to be fast. Our time is gone. Who are these people? You are all Veronica. Look at me. There's witchcraft in your family. Lift your hands. I want to pray for you. Don't let it go right now. Over her and her family, I cause witchcraft completely in the name of Jesus Christ. Is your sister here? Where is she? Sister, are you here? Quickly, please come. Come and hold her hands. I see a fight for the destiny of the people in this family. And God wants to set you free now. I stretch my hands. You are holding your hands. Representing the family. I break every altar. Responsible for hardship and pain in your family. And I declare right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. That as my hand comes on both of you. Let there be the beginning of strange testimonies. Strange testimonies. Strange testimonies. Strange testimonies. In the name of Jesus. God is giving people miracles. Are you giving Jesus praise? Come on Koinonia. Make sure they confirm you and check you. God is touching people. Touching people. There is a lady. There is a lady you came here. Since 29th December. You have been bleeding non-stop. Check yourself. It just stopped right now. Check yourself. It just stopped right now. Hallelujah. We are going to do two things concurrently. Your prayer request. Did you come with them? Or you forgot? Please bring them out. Always come with your prayer request when you come for the miracle service. Now, ushers, quickly, please collect the prayer request. If you are trusting God for a healing miracle, please, now is the time. Quickly, come out here very quickly. Come out here very quickly. Those outside, hold on. Those outside, if you are in the overflow and you are yet to come in. If you have come in, it's okay, you can come. But if you are yet to come, those in the overflow, the first overflow, just walk outside. Stand in front, outside at the projector. Those, the overflow at the roadside, just stand right there um, so that we can, we can make it fast. Those inside and those who have entered, come to the front quickly. Trusting God for a healing miracle. Pass your request to the ushers. If there are ushers here or protocol, please collect quickly. And then you can come quickly. Please, educate. Okay. Pastor Ejimi will be outside. You will be outside with... Um, Shade, come stand up. Oh, stand up. This pastor's wife will have to start walking now. Stand up. In the name of Jesus Christ, please. Three of you will go outside. In the name of Jesus, you will lay hands. Please come. I'll lay my hands on you. Let me lay my hands on them. It's a very good thing to expose them. Father, please anoint them. As they lay hands on the sick. In the name of Jesus. As they lay hands on the sick, let your healing power flow through them mighty name of Jesus Christ. So please you go outside the gym. You can meet them. They can go outside here and then in the name of Jesus Christ. As they lay hands on you, please if they don't ask you anything, don't worry. Just receive by faith. You don't have to start explaining. Our time is gone. Then right here, Pastor Alpha, Pastor Femi, uh, Benga, okay, promise you can also go. Mike, join them. Um, okay, no, no, no. Let's not do it that way. One, two, three. One, two, three. Will be enough. Okay, Mike. Or Pastor Alpha, you can stay. Um, 
Pastor Femi, Benga, Mike, and promise you can go outside. They'll, they'll, you just position yourself and then you minister to them very quickly. And then, Pastor Fa, you can join me and then we we'll do it in the worship team. You will help us. Please collect the request very quickly. Let's be very fast about it in the name of Jesus. I'm, I'm praying a prayer now. Everyone, please participate and say amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare that everyone sick here is declared free right now. And as hands are laid on you, let there be supernatural healing. In the name of Jesus, God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. At Calvary. At Calvary. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. In the name of Jesus. Jesus is faithful. At Calvary, at Calvary, burdens are lifted at Calvary. Over now, Jesus now. is now.
Aaron is here. Just, just indicate and then you'll drop it, please. Don't disorganize the line so that we can hurry up. Because by the time you go back, they will have collected.
stretch your hands on this request. Stretch your hands on this request. We are going to pray on them right now. Please stretch your hands on this request. In the name of Jesus, there is a God that answers prayers. If you are outside, don't worry. You are still on the healing line. It's still pray for you. But for time's sake, let's stretch our hands in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and begin to declare that every request, please make sure we have all the requests. The request here. Every request is turned into a testimony. Go ahead and begin to declare it. This is our year of triumph. In this year of triumph, we declare and declare. We declare and declare. Supernatural miracles. Are you praying? Are you praying? Miracles, miracles, all the consolations of the earth. I say it again, between now and miracle service February, return with dear some testimonies. Every impossible situation represented here as touching your life, your finances, your health, your family, may the God of heaven turn it into a testimony. Anyone who must be cleared on the way for this testimony to come to pass, we clear them from the way. Anyone who must appear for this request to be testimonies, we command them to appear. Anything that must change for this to be called a testimony, we command it to change. In the name of Jesus. Father, we trust you. We have presented this before you. And Lord, in the name of Jesus, we pick it back as testimonies. In the name of Jesus, you will do this and you will glorify yourself. In the name of Jesus. Now lift up your hands and pray for you now. I pray in the name of Jesus and I pray for your life. Hard life, the life of hardship. I command it to end now from your life. I command it to end now from your family. I command it to end now from your life. To end from your family. The kind of opportunity you have never seen in the name of Jesus. Some of you, beginning from tomorrow, you will begin to see it. Believe what I'm saying. You will begin to see it in the name of Jesus. I don't know what a current event happens in your life. While you think you have escaped it, it happens again. I'm prophesying to you. It comes to an end right now. In this year of triumph, it comes to an end right now. It comes to an end right now. Please stretch your hands towards me. I want to speak favor to your life. In the name of Jesus, 
the God who by grace has favored this ministry in an unbelievable dimension I pray may the favor that God has put upon this ministry I transfer it strangely to your life receive it receive it receive it receive it right now it begins to help her please my God receive it right now I release that favor strength favor strength favor strength favor strength favor men helping you strength favor women helping you believe it strength favor enemies helping you critics helping you mysteriously I decree and declare whatever has refused to work in your life you try it is working for others you see it working for others but when it's your turn it does not work I command it to begin to work now I command it to begin to work now ladies I pray for you I don't know what has covered your glory you are great you are virtuous but glory covered I declare that from this miracle service an unfailing of your glory an unfailing of your glory I want to pray for everybody but specifically for our brothers one of the blessings of this year is that God will bless your hands if you don't believe it just keep quiet don't criticize just keep quiet but for as many who are trusting God that God will establish you as a man I prophesy to you receive that unction receive that unction the unction that establishes men to be able to take care of their homes to be ready to be a man indeed ta, 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 ta. receive that grace right now receive that grace right now lift your hands and see pray some of us are victims of foolishness therefore I pray for you the spirit of wisdom be baptized with it right now be baptized with the spirit of wisdom I don't know what you have lost but this is January God has declared that it's a year of trial therefore I command between now and next miracle service receive double restoration double restoration double restoration I want to pray for you for speed see let me tell you something when speed comes into your life when speed comes into your life you will be surprised that within a short time you will catch up and do a lot of things I prophesy to you where they have overtaken you something comes on your life this night run like Elijah pursue pursue overtake recover all without fail I prophesy pursue overtake recover all two more prophecies and we are done I don't know what distracted you from loving God you were not like that your prayer life was a priority your word life was a priority but something feared you off I pray fresh impartation of hunger for God and the things of God take it now take it now fresh hunger fresh fire fresh hunger prayer fire word fire fasting fire prayer fire word fire fasting fire receive it in the name of Jesus I break the course of spiritual laziness laziness to wake up and pray laziness to fast laziness to study I break it from your life in the name of Jesus 
And I pray for you. Last prayer point. Some of you have been obeying God in the secret. But the result has refused to manifest. According to the word. When you do things in secret. God rewards you openly. Is that not what the Bible says? I want to prophesy to you. I don't know who shut the door. I'm praying oh, And this is from my spirit. I know you have been tightened. But there's, we have not seen the evidence. I know my God has helped you. I pray for you. And open testimonies. Open proofs. Open results. Receive it right now. Let that fire come on you. Let that fire come on you. Let that fire come on you. Anyone on your job here and you are having cases with your superiors, I'm praying for you now. Beginning from Monday, I change their hearts towards you. Whenever they are looking for men to promote, may you be the one for the recommendation. And anyone here called jobless, who is interested in a job or your loved ones, in the name of Jesus Christ, I don't care whether you apply or not, may the God of heaven orchestrate favor to your life. Every businessman here, every businesswoman, I command it to work for you. Help them. I command it. Ah, no, no, no. I have that anointing. Oh, that one God gave me. I release it for you. Let it work for you. The power of performance. May the God I serve make it work for you. The power of performance. May the God I serve make it work for you. Access to men you do not know. Access to their resources. Access to favor from them. As you sleep in the night, may the God that I serve show you secrets in your dream. That you will wake up jumping and smiling. You will wake up rejoicing in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The honor that God has placed by grace upon this house. I pray you are part of what God is doing and there's no reason why you should not partake of it. You have honored me you have honored God. I compel that anyone that looks at your eyes, except you don't have eyes, but that they can look at your eyes. I compel favor from them to you. The Bible says Esther obtained favor from anyone who saw her. Not talk to her. They just see you and rise up to help you. May the God that I serve make it happen for you. Lift your hands and give Jesus praise. Thank you, Jesus. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.